In this screencast, I'm going to show you how we can calculate r squared, also known as the coefficient of determination. You've already learned about the correlation coefficient, that's r. So if you square the correlation coefficient, you get the coefficient of determination. r squared typically has been used to evaluate the adequacy of a model. So the coefficient of determination, r squared, is a common measure that is used, often erroneously, to assess model adequacy. In words, r squared is the amount of the variability in the data that is explained by your regression model. The total variability in the data is given by the following, SST. It's just the sum of yi minus y bar, and squaring all those, we've already seen that the residual variability, SSE, is given by the sum squared of the residuals. The difference between SST, the total variability in the data, and SSE is SSR, the regression sum of squares. This is the variability that is explained by or accounted for by the model. So obviously, if you have a good model, you're going to increase SSR with the expense of SSE. The coefficient of determination is therefore calculated as the ratio of SSR, the regression sum of squares, divided by the total sum of squares. And that's also equal to 1 minus SSE over SST. As I mentioned up above, R squared is used often erroneously to assess model adequacy. It is much better to use something known as adjusted R squared, which is 1 minus SSE over N minus P. P here is the number of parameters in your model. For a simple linear model, this is just two because we have beta naught and beta one, the slope and intercept, divided by SST over N minus one. And I've got a follow-up screencast that's gonna explain all about why you want to use the adjusted R squared and not R squared. So let's go ahead and calculate these things for our example that we've been working with for the last couple of screencasts. This is the regression output relating our temperature to our porosity. You're going to learn now how to calculate the regression sum of squares, the total sum of squares, and then we're going to calculate r squared. The square root of r squared is multiple r, so those two are just related by a power of 2, and then the adjusted r squared. So we've got our data over here. I've cleaned up this spreadsheet a little bit from what we've been working on previously. Let's go ahead and recalculate SSE. SSE is the sum squared of our residuals here, so that's just sum squared of the residuals, and that's 60.82. In order to calculate sum squared of the regression, or the regression sum of squares, we first need to calculate SST, the total sum of squares. That's just how far each of our data points is from the average, and we square that, so that's SST. So that's just equal to the sum squared of yi minus y bar, 523.3. And that's exactly what we get here in the regression output. SST is 523, so now you know how to calculate that. Now that we know SST and SSE, we can use this equation up here to calculate SSR. That's just SST minus SSE. Essentially, it's the amount of the total error that is accounted for by the regression model. And that's 462.5. Again, that's what we get using the regression tool. We get SSR of 462.5. Now that we know SSE, SSR, and SST, we can calculate the R squared. R squared, again, is given by the ratio of SSR divided by SST, or 1 minus SSE over SST, and that's 0.884. We can always take the square root of R squared to get our correlation coefficient, R, of 0.94. And finally, our adjusted R squared which is given by this formula up here, and that's 1 minus SSE divided by N minus 2. P for a simple linear model is 2. We have two parameters in our model. We divide that by SST, and if we divide by, divide by N minus 1, we multiply by N minus 1, and so our adjusted R squared is 0.8605. These three we've calculated and that's exactly what our regression output is providing us. So now you've learned how to calculate everything that's highlighted in green. In the future, I'm gonna show you how you can calculate the remaining area of this ANOVA output here of the regression tool. So just to sum things up, for our example, we got an R squared of 
There are many difficulties inherent in using the R squared value to judge the model adequacy or goodness of fit. I've got a follow-up screencast that's going to show you why you don't want to rely upon R squared. It's better to use adjusted R squared. And the reason for that is a process with a high degree of random noise will cause a low value of R squared, even though the model used might be adequate. Making a model more complicated by adding terms will almost always cause an increase in R squared, but this does not imply that the new model is a better one. Again, see my follow-up screencast on adjusted R squared. There are alternate measures that allow us to assess better the performance of a model. The general advice is to avoid the use of R squared. Thanks for watching.